Okay, where to start? I have been meaning to do a London style video for so, so long. I get so many requests. I've lived in London my whole life, so I get a lot of questions about places I recommend going in London, and I love exploring London and going to new restaurants and galleries and markets, so I also love giving recommendations. London is huge though. It doesn't feel huge when you're used to it and when you live in it, but looking at a map, I have a little tube map here. It's big, there's lots of areas. So I'm gonna do my best today to recommend places to visit, areas to go to. Please bear in mind that I can't talk about everywhere. It's just too much, it's too huge, and I don't know everywhere. I'm still discovering new things all the time every weekend. I don't really know South London that well, but I'm gonna try and touch on all the different kind of central-ish areas. This video isn't really aimed at people who have never been to London. I haven't spoken that much about touristy stuff. This is just the stuff that I would recommend doing and stuff that I wouldn't want people to miss out on when they come to London. I would really recommend printing off a tube map and do not be scared of the tube. It's so easy to use once you understand it and it's really great for getting you around places. Also bear in mind that a lot of central London is very close together. The amount of times I find tourists asking me how to get to Leicester Square when they're standing in Covent Garden and they don't realise it's literally like five seconds up the road. So just look at a map and you'll realise that places like Oxford Circus, Piccadilly, Bond Street, Covent Garden are all in walking distance from each other. But for anywhere that isn't walking distance, the tube is very easy to use. So please take my recommendations and use Google alongside them to kind of work out the best routes for you and the best places to visit. This is just a slight overview of my London recommendations. Okay, intro over, let's get into this. So let's start just south of the river, and I love spending time on the South Bank, which is just along the Thames. I like to walk from the Millennium Wheel all the way down, and you go past the Globe Shakespeare's Theatre, which is really pretty to look at, and around there is the Clink, which is like the first ever prison, and I just love it around there, because you can really imagine like the olden times, and it's all cobbled these streets, and I love the feel around there. You can walk past the Tate Modern, which is a really lovely gallery, it's free to go in, a few of the exhibitions you have to pay for, but you can definitely go in, have a look, and the shop is great. At Christmas time, there's a really nice Christmas market along the South Bank, and in the summer they have Udderbelly, which is like a kind of comedy festival thing with pims and outside benches and it's really nice to go and sit again it's free entry and then still south of the river is Borough Market it's one of my favorite food markets it's so kind of buzzing and full of life on the weekends it's mainly a food market there's also Vinopolis right there which is a really cool place to go for wine tasting and there's loads of nice little restaurants and cafes I just love walking through Borough Market and trying all the amazing food and coffee now let's head a little bit southwest towards kind of Sloan Square and Sloan Street Station. Around there is a really pretty area to walk around. It's crazy expensive and I feel like you kind of look around thinking like, is this real? But it's also just quite nice to walk around and it's, it's, it's just a really pleasant area. And the Saatchi Gallery is there, which is literally top of my list of galleries to visit in London. It's free entry and it's incredible. I love the sort of art that's there. It's not just like paintings on a wall. They have amazing installations. They had huge giant ants like on the wall and giant people that they'd made. They've got like an oil room where you just look down and it's filled with oil and it just looks like a reflection of the ceiling. It's really interesting. I love the Saatchi Gallery. And right next door there's a Comptoir Lebanais, I think it's called, which is a really good like Lebanese chain restaurant that's really nice. Still that side of town is High Street Kensington, that's the local tube station, and that's a really nice high street full of shops, and that's where Whole Foods is, the original Whole Foods in London. It's huge, it's like three floors. It's an amazing kind of healthy food store, and there's restaurants on the top floor, or like little food stands. It's so, so nice, I love going to Whole Foods. And also in that area is Guru Makeup Emporium, which if you are a beauty lover is a really cool website. They now have a little shop in High Street Ken and you can get kind of makeup forever and a few brands you can't find elsewhere. Also that side of town is Notting Hill. If you've seen the film Notting Hill, you'll know how beautiful it is. Again, a very expensive area, but really nice to walk around. On the weekends, you have Portobello Market, which has a lot of antiques, old cameras, clothes, a bit of food, flowers as well. It's just really nice to walk along the market. At the North Kensington side of Portobello Market is Bluebell's Cafe, which my friend actually owns and it's great, and Pizza East, which is a really, really great restaurant that I love, has amazing pizzas. And the Westbourne Grove end of Portobello Market, I really, really like for walking around. There's like a diptyque store, there's Ottolenghi, which is lovely for lunch, and Tom's Kitchen. It's nice to just go there and pretend that's where you live. It's just a really nice area to walk around. Okay, so let's go more central now, and Bond Street is the station to go to if you want to go to Selfridges. There's so many areas around here that I'm gonna miss out because it's just too much to talk about, 
but I love Selfridges. I don't know why, it just feels kind of less touristy, but it has everything I need. It's not kind of intimidating. It's not like Harrods, which I find a bit kind of intimidating. I love Selfridges. On the top floor, there's actually a secret roof, and at the moment they've got a restaurant called Le Chalet, which is really nice. There's like blankets, it all feels like a ski chalet, and they do really good lunch and dinner and tea. I think they're gonna shut down for a few weeks in March and then reopen for the summer because there's an outdoor bit and it's gonna be all summery. But that's always changing. I think there was a crazy golf up on that roof once. It's always different things. And there's like a secret lift to get to it near the Chanel perfume stand. There's also a few like hidden restaurants around that kind of Bond Street area. There's Smack Lobster, which does really great lobster rolls for lunch. It's a very casual, not really like a sit down restaurant place. It's more of like a pop in, get a lobster roll and go. There's Meat Liquor, which is behind Debenhams, a really cool burger restaurant. And I definitely recommend that if you like burgers. Also Patty and Bun is around there. That's great as well. So heading up towards Oxford Circus. So you're walking up Oxford Street towards Oxford Circus. That's where like the big top shop is. Behind that is Riding House Cafe, a really nice restaurant. And opposite that is Caffeine, a really great place for coffee. Opposite top shop is Liberty. I would definitely recommend going there. It's crazy expensive. No one really shops there. I mean, the beauty hall, everything's the same price as everywhere else, but the clothes are crazy expensive. It's just such a beautiful old building. Definitely worth visiting. Some of my friends who have grown up in London have never been there and I just can't believe it because I love to go in and walk around. It's all kind of wooden and it has such an old amazing feel to it. And just behind Liberty is Carnaby Street which is really cool. It kind of reminds me of like the 60s time in London. Chucky Wocky Doodah is just behind Carnaby Street and there's Brandy Melville and there's a few cool shops down there. If you fancy a really nice meal, No Pete is at the end of Carnaby Street and that's a really really nice restaurant. So if you go down Carnaby Street you kind of end up around the Piccadilly Circus area. There's a restaurant called Shoryu there that does really authentic ramen. I really love that place. And apparently in Piccadilly Circus there's a really good donut place. It's called Crosstown Donuts. I haven't managed to try it yet because every time I go it's closed. I keep going at night but apparently they do really good donuts and I'm definitely gonna try some next time I'm near Piccadilly Circus. There's loads of restaurants and places around Piccadilly Circus. I recommend heading more into Soho where there's lots of little restaurants and cool record shops. That sort of Wardour Street area is really cool to walk around and discover like little restaurants. So if you head through Soho you kind of end up in the Covent Garden Leicester Square area. I count them as like the same thing, they're right next to each other. Leicester Square is a bit more touristy, Covent Garden is a bit more chilled. In Covent Garden you have the big piazza which is the big square in the middle and there's a lot going on there. There's shops, there's Ben's Cookies, there's Shake Shack, that's probably the more touristy part of Covent Garden. But recently they've opened lots of little beauty stores around there. There's like a Clinique shop, an Urban Decay shop, a Jo Malone, all these little boutiques, there's a Bobbi Brown, like brands that don't normally have their own shops have opened their little own beauty boutiques and there's Chanel and Burberry so I definitely recommend going there if you want beauty stuff. If you head to Neil's Yard, which is a little hard to find but just ask or look on the map, it's like a secret courtyard in Covent Garden and in there's some really cute juice shops and it's all kind of painted in bright colours and you, that's where you'll find Home Slice which is definitely one of my favourite places to go for pizza. They're huge, you can buy them by the slice or you can share a big 22 inch they are delicious. Just through Neil's Yard, you'll find Monmouth Street. And I really like this street as well. Monmouth Coffee is on there, which does the best coffee in London, I think. I'm not a coffee kind of expert, but that's the only coffee I really like because it's so smooth and not at all bitter. There's loads of little nice cafes and shops there and a quarterly spa. It's just a nice relaxed kind of street to walk up. Okay, so now let's head to East London where you will find Liverpool Street Station. Around here is where Spitalfields Market is, which is definitely better on a Saturday, I think. I really like Spitalfields. It definitely has a more of an East London feel than the other markets. I think it's mainly clothes. I never really buy anything when I go, but it's just nice to look around. And it's a nice mix of proper shops. They have like Space NK and Market as well, which is just behind. I have another friend's cafe to recommend. My friend has a cafe called Trade, which is really great. It's just around the corner, so I would recommend that. And if you want something super fancy, Duck and Waffle is just around the corner. That's in the Heron Tower, so it's like the top floor of this huge building. You get a lift, it's really scary, but once you're up there, it's amazing. It's just above Sushi Samba, which is also really nice for cocktails and sushi, but Duck and Waffle is incredible. It's just the most amazing restaurant. It's open 24 hours so you can go for a coffee at 3am and they'll be there and it's really fun. So let's walk over to Brick Lane 
and that's still East London. It's known for its Indian restaurants, so on a Saturday night it's kind of buzzing and there's all these Indian restaurants and people outside trying to get you in. It seems a bit like holiday, like a strip when you're on holiday, but the restaurants are actually really good. I've eaten in quite a few of them before and it was a proper good Indian. But there's also a Mexican place called DF Mexico that I would really recommend. They do great frozen margaritas and really good Mexican food. And just around that Brick Lane area during the day there's a lot of secondhand fashion stores. It's really cool to look around and in the summer there's loads of outdoor bars. You can just get like pims and sit on a bench. It's a very cool like young trendy feel around there. Over by Shoreditch and Hoxton is where the breakfast club is. I love that for breakfast and brunch. And Hoxton Square is really good for a night out. I definitely say if you are in London and you want to go out to bars and clubs. On a Saturday night, Shoreditch and Hoxton is really fun. It's got a nice atmosphere, but the places play good music and it just has a good feel to it. Okay, so let's head a bit more North London, which is a bit more residential, but we'll start at Angel, which is Islington area. Upper Street is one of the best high streets in London, I think. It's very underrated, because most people who go there just live around there. But there's so many amazing shops and restaurants, and it's such a long high street. If you find Camden Passage, which is just behind, it's like a secret little passage, there's little market stands on the weekend, and there's a place called Coffee Works, it's a really cool place to sit and have a coffee and a slice of cake. It has a very cool feel to it. It's just behind Super Dry, if you know where that is. There's also a restaurant called Meet People, which is more kind of the angel end of Upper Street. And that's really basic, but really nice for just like steak and chips. It feels like you're just sitting in someone's kitchen. And then if you just walk down Upper Street, you'll see all the kind of shops. There's Whistles, there's an Ottolenghi, there's a really cool ice cream place. It's just everything you need, basically, on that high street. And then the next stop is Camden. Camden Station is a really easy one to get to, and Camden Market is very famous in London. It's a huge tourist attraction, but it still feels like you're just going somewhere kind of local and quite chilled. It can get very busy, but if you kind of know where to go, it's quite easy to navigate around. The main street I wouldn't recommend, it's kind of full of tattoo parlours and places to get piercings and it can be quite intimidating but if you go into the market um, it's just along the canal, it's really nice to walk along the canal which can take you all the way to East London if you want it to. But Camden Market is so cool, it has a real kind of like 60s hippie feel to it. You can buy jewellery, you can basically buy anything you like and there's a huge food market in there as well which is so nice. In the summer you can just get some food and go sit by the canal and I absolutely love Camden Market. Don't be afraid to like explore, there's so many different parts to it, there's the stables which has recently kind of been renovated and it's really cool. But then I also love the outdoor bit as well. Just look around, you can spend ages there. It's bigger than you think it is. And then I think the most north I'm gonna recommend is Hampstead Heath and Primrose Hill. I can't miss that because Hampstead Heath is such a beautiful part of London. I think when people think of London, they just think of the hustle and bustle and busyness. But Hampstead Heath is huge. It's just a huge green area and you feel like you're in the countryside. If you're gonna be near the kind of Highgate area, I don't know, you might be staying there, you can walk all the way from Highgate through Hampstead Heath and end up in Hampstead. Hampstead is a really cute little high street. It has a real villagey feel to it. If you don't want that kind of busy central London feel, go to Hampstead, Primrose Hill. Such nice high streets and they're not that far from town especially Primrose Hill. You can walk up Primrose Hill and you can see like the whole of London, it's the most amazing view and that little high street is great. I've spoken about Greenbury's Cafe loads of times, it's a really nice place for lunch. There's just loads of places on that high street that are really nice. If you're in Highgate you definitely have to go to the crepery, they do the best crepes. There's normally a queue but it's so worth it, it's just a little stand and their crepes are amazing. So I know that was a lot of information, but I'm gonna make a serious description box here. And I think I'm gonna do a blog post to go with this. So I will link to every single thing that I mentioned. I'll type it all out for you guys. And I hope that this was interesting or helpful. I'm sorry if it was overwhelming, but I'm aware that people will be in different areas. So kind of take from it what you want and adapt it to your trip to London. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. And I'll see you on Tuesday for my next one. Bye.